Okay, since we're doing Adrian's route, I kind of just want to do the opposite of everything I chose last time, so... Last time I chose keep running, this time let's do ask him for help. That'll go well. Maybe he doesn't know what that other guy is up to. I should try asking him for help. Hey, you've got to do something. There's a guy in a room back there who's... You're rather impudent, aren't you? How did you get in here? Bangs! Huge ones! So that means... Where did... I feel a sharp pain on the back of my neck. Okay, this is the same. Um, let's, right, interrupt them. My life is at stake here. Excuse me, but I'm pretty interested in knowing if... Oh my god, did I just die instantly? <laughs> what happened? All of a sudden, I... My whole body just went numb. That was rather excessive, was it not? Now she's bleeding out all over the carpet, Luca. My apologies, sir. I hadn't meant to use such force, but her audacity irritated me. Perhaps in your next life, human, you'll know to hold your tongue when your betters are speaking. Oh, okay, I didn't know that was possible. Whoops. Alright, well... I'll pretend none of that happened. It was all a bad dream. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so this time, don't interrupt them. Um, that one. Um, <laughs> I hope I don't die again. I came here with a whole group of people. We parted ways just for today, but they'll be extremely worried if I don't get back by morning. They might even be able to track my phone via GPS and find me here. I'm sure neither of these guys want their secret castle found, so maybe this, with this they'll let me get- God damn it! <laughs> Again? Oh my god. I thought you weren't planning on killing her, sir. Ah, uh, my mistake. Your mistake will be quite difficult to clean up, my lord. Sorry, sorry. I just saw red when I heard her threatening us like that. As if humans could find this place. She did. Ah, uh, you're right. I wonder how that happened anyway. Bother. Well, if any of her companions do show up, I suppose we shall simply have to dispose of them also. Do not let the others find out about this or you will be in trouble too, you know. Stupid human. Why did you have to go and anger Lord Adrian? Still. Why? Why does this sensation feel so familiar? My lord? No, it is nothing. Wow. Wow! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just finding all of the bad ends. Um, see? And this time we'll go talk to Adrian. I'll make a beeline for the study. I haven't gotten a chance to look at the books on that shelf yet. Might be some interesting stuff there. This place is a treasure trove. Treasure trove. So many rare old books. I'll just take my time then. The Noctigals really are an interesting bunch. Even just looking at their names, you can tell everyone's really diverse. I can even see it from these books, since, they're, since there's all sorts of different languages. I can't read a word of Greek and only took a year of Latin, but luckily there's plenty of books in German and English. I used to think I was pretty cultured, but there's always someone above you, huh? Well, they've had way more time to pick up new languages than me. Oh gosh, the sun's going to rise soon. I better go back to my room. There sure were a lot of interesting books in there, though. Not much in the way of architecture, but there were a lot of books on music and art. And did you enjoy yourself while going through my things? Adrian. 
Come to think of it, every time I've been in that study room before, he's been there. I wonder if that's part of his wing of the castle, so to speak. Sorry, I just... I remembered there being a lot of books in there, so I was curious and wanted to read them. It is not as if I really mind. Books are meant to be read, after all. However... Hmm? You've kept me waiting. Huh? What do you mean? I went to your room to find you, but you were not present. I decided to wait for you to return, but in the end you were gone for hours. I find that insulting. Well, I'm sorry I troubled you, but you knew exactly where I was, didn't you? Why didn't you just come to me if you wanted to talk to me so badly? There are two problems with your reasoning. First of all, while the rest of my family is away, I am the lord of this castle. It is not my obligation to do things at your convenience, especially as you are nothing but a prisoner here. He sure likes using his title whenever it's convenient for him. So he says he doesn't like being called Lord, but he still wants to be treated like one? Doesn't seem fair, really. Secondly, I did not come and find you merely because I wanted to talk. I'm hungry. Huh? But... wait. I have already waited for an entire week. I waited for you to get used to the place and for you to calm down. During that time, I've become quite parched. I told you when you first came here, did I not, that I was curious about your taste. Tonight I aim to satisfy that curiosity at least once. But the sun's going to rise soon. And? Aren't you guys nocturnal? Hmm. It is true that sunlight burns us. Then, however, I believe that, sim that simply adds to the excitement, does it not? It does not! I turn my back to Adrian. For some reason, it's hard to look him straight in the eye. That red glow just pulls you in like a tractor beam. Look, if it's blood you need, you can have it tomorrow night. Like I said, the sun's rising. My blood's not worth risking your life over, is it? You're not even sure it's palatable. You're being strangely defiant tonight. Do you object to having your blood suck that much? It didn't seem like that big of a deal before, but now that the prospect is right in front of me, it's honestly kind of scary since I don't know what to expect. Well, it is no matter. Miranda, I want you to freeze in place. All of a sudden, my body stopped shaking. I can't... I can't move. What did you do? Miranda, I want you to hold very still and try not to say anything that will displease me. Just stop moving. Stop talking. There's a voice in my head, telling me what to do. It's similar to my voice, but it's... not me. Yes. My body's not doing what I want it to. No, I... the sun! <laughs> God, half of me doesn't even care if Adrian burns so crisp at this point. Better him than... It hurt for a second when his fangs broke my skin, but then... The inside of my head is all fluffy. Something deep inside is telling me to stop resisting. You are finally quiet. It is strange to hear such silence after I've finally gotten used to your chattering. Very well. You may speak if you wish. That's so rude, Adrian! What the fuck? The voice in my head is gone. Was it really his doing, after all? I can't believe vampires have this kind of power. It took everything I had to resist giving in to what he wanted me to do, and even then it barely did anything. It is a difference in willpower. As things stand now, you are much too soft to fight against me. What's happening? Hmm? What, does it feel good? <laughs> That's a matter of course. It would be rather difficult to suck blood from something that continues squirming and crying. This sort of thing is necessary for both our own safety and the praise. Why would you worry about your praise safety? We vampires have to drink living blood. Blood from a dead creature both tastes disgusting and is not sustaining. Contrary to what many believe, we are usually not killers. Not usually. Wait, was he saying this whole thing while <laughs> drinking her blood? What? Yeah, no, looking good there, Miranda. What the hell? Give me a handkerchief, please. What is it? No, it is simply different from what I was expecting. You t your taste. I would not say that it is the finest quality blood I have ever had, but it is possessed of an interesting flavor that I have not tasted in quite some time. Is it because you are foreign, perhaps? Do you not get, um, imported foods often? No, it is hard to bring them all the way back to the castle. Because I cannot leave here, I... Mm, what's wrong? 
No, it is nothing. I merely remembered something slightly unpleasant. The sun is about to rise. You should head back to your room and rest. Uh, wait a... He's banished. Even though he just attacked me all of a sudden, I can't bring myself to be mad at him. Is it because of his persuasion powers? Or maybe it's just how sad he looked at the end. Why is Adrian being left all alone in this castle? Why can't he leave? Is it that he's not allowed to? Or that he won't? There must be a reason why he's here with only Luca for company. For someone who hates being bored, being cooped up in a castle for two hundred years doesn't seem like much fun. The more I think about it, the more questions I have. It's been a whole day since I had my blood sucked. I guess Adrian might have felt bad about what happened because I didn't see him at all yesterday. Maybe I'm overestimating his kindness, though. Having him inside my brain like that, it was kind of scary. It's already the 18th. Pretty soon the 22nd is going to roll around and the rest of the knocked gulls will be back. What's going to happen to me when they return? It's back to my room. I think I'll go ahead and walk back to my room anyway. Maybe I can get some reading in before bed. Even though the Noctigals are suppo supposedly such a rich and influential old family, I've never seen them mentioned in the history books, huh? That would be because the most powerful families operate behind the scenes. Oh. I thought he went back to his room after he stormed out of the study. I guess he got bored or something. Risking detention for the sake of mere monetary gains would be a fool's errand. Didn't your brother and sister burn down a theater just because they didn't like the design? Well, that had nothing to do with monetary gain, you see. So, your siblings get to leave and do what they want, then come back and just tell you about it? I have always found the tales of their escapades to be highly amusing. You don't think it would be more fun to leave the castle and actually experience these things for yourself? What exactly are you getting at? I have to admit, I've been stuck on how you said that you're not allowed to leave the castle. Have you been in here your whole life? I remember a very long time ago. There was a tall white tower overlooking an expansive garden of moonflowers. Hmm? I don't know what place he's talking about, unless someone got rid of it in a fit of rage or something. There's no garden like that on the Noctical Castle grounds. I've been all around the place and looked out all the windows. One night during a full moon, there was a fire. A lot of people were killed. I do not understand why I have this memory. Perhaps it is but a dream I have confused for reality. I have other hazy memory fragments of faraway places, but from what I can clearly remember, I have been here in the Palastra Noctigal for my entire life, yes. I think that it is probably for the best, though I cannot explain why I believe so. Adrian. I am not sure what ideas you've cooked up in that little head of yours, but my older brothers and sisters treat me very well, and entertainment is not in short supply here. I am not unhappy. If that were true, you wouldn't have to be forbidden to leave. To me, it just sounds like you're trying to convince yourself that you're happy, so you don't have to think about any alternatives. Not wanting to leave isn't the same as not being able to. Why are you pressing this issue so much? What does it matter to you whether I stay in here or not? I'm... I'm just worried about you. You seem happy most of the time, but sometimes you have this really sad, faraway look in your eyes. Especially when you look at the moon. Like you're lonely. And what do you know of me? You've not been here two weeks, yet you presume to be able to tell me what I wish to do? What is your game? I'm not trying to play games. If I'm wrong about you, then it's my mistake, and I'm sorry for prying. But you haven't once said that I'm wrong. Uh... <laughs> He goes, Ah! I have grown wary of this subject, Miranda. Miranda. I did not come here to discuss such trifles with you. You think of your future, your very long future, as a trifle? Haughty words from someone with no future of her own. He doesn't say another word, yet I'm still frozen in place as if by silent persuasion. Before I can even decide whether I want to resist or not, his fangs break the skin of my neck again. Mm. It stings. It hurts. It kind of feel as, feels like my neck's on fire. I don't know if I'll ever get used to how it feels to be bitten. The whole thing seems half-hearted to me, though. He looks at the wound for a really short while before releasing me. It feels like he's just going through the motions. I don't think he came to my room because he was hungry. If he really wanted to suck my, my blood, he would have just used his powers to make me obedient like last time. 
Though to be honest, this time around, I don't think my willpower would lose to his. When I roll over, he's sitting on the edge of the bed, staring outside the window through a small gap in the curtains. I can't read his expression, but the tension is gone. Dude, wipe your mouth and your neck. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Do you remember what it was like before you returned into a vampire? I don't know why, but somehow it just feels right to ask this now. No. His voice is hollow, like he's just given up on fighting against my stubbornness. Or maybe deep down, he knows that what I said was right. Adrian's just settled and doesn't want to admit it because of his huge pride in how much he wants to believe that his siblings are doing what's best for him. I remember being here. I remember meeting Luca and my siblings. That is all. The rest, I suppose it happened too long ago. I was a different person then. What about the head of the family? Hmm? You're a second generation vampire, right? Doesn't that mean there's someone above you? You don't remember meeting them? Ah, the first generation vampires. There are three of them in our family. My siblings and I were turned by the second child, Octavia. So I suppose you, you could call her my mother. I do not remember being turned, but I do remember meeting Octavia here. Who turned Octavia into a vampire? The so-called head of the family that you mentioned. The Noctegal, one who was born a vampire. But no one has heard from him in centuries. Sometimes I wonder if he is, a, if he is even still alive. Do you really find this information to be interesting? You're finally showing a normal facial expression again. That's all I wanted. Ha! Ha 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 ha! Really, I completely lose to you. Get some rest. I will, thank you. <laughs> okay. Even though I've talked to Adrian loads of times since I've been here, I feel like this is the first time he was really himself. No posturing, no weird attitude though I don't know why I care so much. Something about his eyes just pull you in. I shouldn't worry so much about him. He's a vampire and like ten times my age, so I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Besides, he's so overbearing and egotistical sometimes. Can someone like him really be restricted from doing anything? But I can't help being curious. What does he have memories of- why does he have memories of a white tower? Why doesn't his family let him leave here? The more I find out, the less I feel like I know. And now there's only two days left. Ah, that was delicious. Nothing like bacon for a midnight snack. Though wasn't there a bit less than last time? Whoa, what are you doing in here? And eating my bacon? Tonight I have partaking of much human food. The nostalgic feeling I had as I ate something I knew to be completely unknown to me combined with my hazy memories and the words you spoke to me last evening, made me curious. I... I went outside. Outside, like, to the courtyard? Weird, I didn't see him there. No, I left the castle grounds. I walked to the edge of the forest and watched the moon rise. Whoa, really? That's great! You were finally able to get out. No, I... More than anything, I dearly wish that I had not... that I had not done so. What? But... But why? What's so great about being stuck in here? I've only been trapped in the castle for two weeks, and even I... When I got to the edge of the woods, I felt something akin to a barrier. Deep within me, there was a voice telling me to stop there. But I, but I ignored it and walked another step. Then another. Then another. Eventually, I left the forest, and... Suddenly, I remembered everything. I understood why I had been told not to leave. Why part of my own self did not wish to go out. Miranda... I am Noctegall. Whoa. Whoa, what? Huh? What are you talking about? Of course you're a Noctegall. You're Adrian van de Noctegall, the Count of... of something. You misunderstand. I am not a Noctegall. I am THE Noctegall. I am over two thousand years old. I was born a vampire. A demon. This entire family came from me. What? What the hell are you saying? How is that even possible? You're from the second generation. You said Octavia turned you. You spoke fondly of all your siblings. Those were all lies I was told and came to believe. White lies so that I could live comfortably. But if you're the head of the family, shouldn't you have, like, ridiculous powers? The Noctigal is supposed to be the strongest in the family, right? And I mean, no offense, but you don't seem all that much stronger than Luca. Do you remember that first night when I sucked your blood? How I persuaded you to stop moving? 
No second, no second generation vampire should have such power. A second generation vampire would tell you don't move, and you would think, ah, perhaps I shouldn't move. You would not suddenly freeze in place. At this very moment, I could tell you to die, and you would throw yourself from that very window. Um, please don't. Jesus Christ. But I was able to resist a little bit last time. Now that I am fully aware of who I am, there will be no resisting. You would not even understand that you've been, per been persuaded. You would simply act. Why not just persuade me into believing that you're the head of the family, then? If I were to do so, it would be as if, uh, it would be as if you'd known all along. That is how powerful it is. There would be no point to it. You. Just you alone. I want you, on your own, to understand who I am and how terrible it is. Okay, let's say you are the head of this family, the Noctigal. What's so bad about that? I have killed countless people, Miranda. Well, you're a vampire. No, vampires require living blood. There is no point to me killing anyone. I merely did so for sport, out of boredom. Oh yeah, he did say something like that before. But you feel bad about it, right? You haven't done it recently. God, am I really making excuses for a murderer? What on earth is wrong with me? Say, why did you wipe your memory and take on a new identity? You chose to do it, didn't you? I get the feeling that you're not just feeling guilty over killing people. I was tired of having absolute power. It is not that I regretted my actions, just that I was bored. I was wary underneath the burden of multiple millennia of memories. I wanted to be someone else, and yet after erasing every bit of my memories and becoming a new person, in the end, I became the same as before. And what's so bad about that? What's so bad about that? What's bad is that nothing changed. If I continue along this path, then just like before, I will end up all alone at the top of the world with a pile of corpses beneath my feet. <laughs> it's so dramatic. There you go. You were finally honest. I... what? What do you mean honest? You're not feeling guilty, and it's not true that you were bored. The truth is way simpler. You were just lonely. Even though people respected and feared you as the knocked gall, that wasn't what you wanted. You wanted to have fun with the rest of the family. The family that you created. You wanted them to dote on you, to love you, to be like a real family. I don't know what it was like before, but hey, now you've got a family that will play cards with you even though you win all the time and act all obnoxious about it. Why, you... They'll tell you all these stories about the outside world instead of keeping you at arm's length. They're so worried about you that they wanted to keep you here to protect you, so you wouldn't remember. Before, I thought they were restricting you out of malice or something, but I get it now. It wasn't that at all. Your family loves you, and you love them. That's why you wanted to forget. You wanted to be equal to them, didn't you? Don't say that nothing's changed. Hasn't everything gone the way you wanted it to? You... How can you say such same, shameless things with a straight face? Am I wrong? <laughs> no. It is as you say. In the end, it really was that simple. Thank you, Miranda. For the first time in my life, I... I truly feel as if a large weight has been lifted from my shoulders at last. Whoa, is the great Lord Noctegall actually deigning to thank a lowly human like me? <laughs> I think the fact that you haven't already crushed my skull like a great brute for all this sass is just more proof of how much you've changed in the last 200 years. I have never before met a human so impudent as you. Given how many humans you've met in your life, I'll take that as a compliment. Thanks. I never would have imagined that I'd be living under the same roof with someone who's been alive for thousands of years, but I'm strangely okay with it. I feel like almost nothing else can surprise me at this point. I wonder if that's a little naive. Well, no matter what happens on the 22nd, I have no regrets. My last night, well, maybe. I shouldn't be so negative. Then again, it's thanks to me that Adrian remembered who he was. His whole family was trying to keep him from remembering. So what if they get mad at me? I guess I'll just have to cross that bridge when I get to it. But what if I don't die? What am I going to do if they miraculously let me live? As usual, you're busy exercising your face, I see. Huh? What do you mean? You're always switching from one facial expression to the next. I never get bored of watching you, Miranda. And just who was it that was calling me ugly when I first got here? Hmm. I wonder who... It was you. <laughs> now, now. Let bygones be bygones. 
What is it? I know that you have a lot on your mind. You've probably been dreading my siblings' return. Ah, I suppose they are actually my grandchildren, are they not? However, I assure you that they will not be able to harm you. Now that I remember who I am, they must abide by, by my wishes. My word is law. So you're intending on telling them that you've remembered everything? Of course, it is a given. But won't that ruin the family relationship you wanted so badly? I know your grandchildren love you, but it'll be hard to treat you the same way when they know that they have to obey everything you say. You are the very, very person who convinced me that my family cares for me. Why are you saying such a thing now? Were your previous words a lie? I'm sorry, I... No. Yes. I don't know. I just don't want you to be alone again. I can't even begin to imagine what 2,000 years of solitude feels like, and for you to face that again just for me. Listen to me, Miranda. If worse comes to worse, I can always have my memory erased again. But if something were to happen to you, that could not possibly be undone. I refuse to endure it. I shall not endure it. I know that Adrian could very easily save my life, but I've come to care about him a lot. I don't want him to hurt again, to be hurt again. On some level, I've already been prepared to die ever since that first night. If you dare try to take the easy way out by allowing yourself to die alone, then you are not the person I thought you were. It's not easy, okay? Not by a long shot. I... I just don't know what to do. Would not a normal person pick the obvious choice? Live. Stay alive. Let me protect you. And let you possibly throw away something, an important family relationship that took you 200 years to build? Don't you think that's the easy way out? Oh, she's crying! Aww. God, I hate that I'm crying. He just makes me so angry. He's such a blockhead. A 2,000 year old blockhead. Why can't you understand that I'm worried about you? That I care about you? I just don't want you to suffer because of me. He's hugging me? No, no, he's just standing there. Looking sad. Look, let me go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was not being fair. Choosing death, death is far from being the easy choice. I have forgotten how permanent death is, how terrifying it must be for a mortal. To be completely honest, I may never be able to understand that fear. However, I would like for you to please consider it from my point of view. It is true what you say, that my family may once again keep me at a distance once they have learned that I remember everything. But what is the other choice? For me to allow them to kill you? For me to continue lying to them about what I remember? Forever? What good is a relationship like that? More importantly, what good is a family that at the cost of being gone forever? That didn't make any sense. No. Oh. What good is a family like that at the cost of me being gone forever? Thanks to you, I have finally understood what it is I hold most dear. I have also come to understand that my family is not nearly as weak as I think it is. When I reflect on my past choices, I have to wonder what might have transpired had I come to them honestly with my concerns if I had only admitted that I was tired of being alone. I can only be this weak and endure possible humi humiliation because of the thought that you will be there with me. So if you tell me that you choose to die, then I will probably have to die as well. It's Romeo and Juliet? What the hell are you saying? You, you'll just, you'll just kill yourself if I die? Are you insane? You barely even know me. I think I am a little bit, ins bit insane, yes, you are right. We have only had two weeks together, after all. However, what I do know of you, I have come to love, to an almost unbearable degree. Did you not consider the possibility that just as you care about me and do not wish me unhappiness, I also care about you and do, and do not wish you dead? I... but you... but... huh? I love you, Miranda. Rejoice! The most powerful, wonderful, and devilishly handsome vampire in the world would like nothing more than for you to stay alive and happy. Jeez, why do you have to ruin what could have been a perfectly good romantic ro moment? Ruin? Did I? Yes! What's this powerful, wonderful, and devilishly handsome stuff? You're so full of yourself. <laughs> Jeez. Miranda, may I bite you again? You're actually asking for my permission? Should I not have? No, I'm glad, but what about tomorrow? I believe I will let you make your own choice about what happens tomorrow. I have already said all that I could to convince you of my reasoning. So for now, I would like only to be connected to you, even if briefly. Hubba hubba. 
Well, when you put it that way. What? That's a d <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the dumbest scene ever. I must say, if telling you that I love you makes your blood taste this sweet, I really ought to say it more often. That is, if you choose to live. <laughs> what is it? You're just saying such corny lines. Corny? Um, what's an old-timey way of saying that? Uh, old-timey? <laughs> oh, hackneyed. You're saying really hackneyed things. How dare you trample all over my good intentions. I'm only teasing. Thanks. For what? I don't know. Lots of things. You might die because of me tomorrow. I like to think that the good, fun things I've experienced in the last two weeks kind of make up for that. A little. Being held prisoner in a castle for two weeks makes up for being dead. Anything sounds bad when you put it like that. I suspect that Luca will want you to make a choice tonight, so unfortunately I can only grant you a few hours to think things over. That's okay. I'll consider everything. Make sure you consider what I told you, Miranda. Those things are most important. All those hackneyed things you said? Of course. Now shoo, shoo, I need to think. Are you telling me the almighty knocked a gall to... Yes. Hm. Please choose wisely. There he goes. I'm just giving him a hard time. In the end, I... As I told you earlier, we are here to ask what you have decided. You have a choice to make, and not much time to make it, Miranda. Hurry and choose, or else we shall decide for you, which might be significantly less pleasant. I have decided to live. Miranda! Your corny lines won me over. I'm sorry. I know things will be difficult for us both, but just like you, I want to give it a try. If you're with me, then... Yes. Yes, I... Will one of you please get your head out of the clouds and explain to me what exactly is going on? Oh, um... Wow, it's kind of a long story. But basically, Adrian got his memory back and he wanted me to live, but I was afraid to because of how his sib... I mean, grandchildren would react and... Wait, wait, I don't understand what you're saying, you stupid girl. Memory? Grandchildren? Yes, you see, I'm Noctigal. What? Of course you're Noctigal. Explain it to me in a way that actually sense. He's reacting the same way I did. No, I am THE Noctigal. You know, one of the original vampires? The one who started this entire family? I thought you knew this already. I... what? You're... Noctigal. As in, THE Noctigal. Yes, that is what I just said. As in, the vampire who's thousands of years old and who hasn't been seen in centuries? I... I thought that was just a legend or something. Centuries is a bit of an exaggeration. I am right in front of you, am I not? I am thousands of, thousands of years old, however. You're... He's not Gull. He's your great-grandfather. Wait a moment. Are you saying that you didn't know? No. I had no idea until just now. Strange. Zurine was supposed to have told you when she turned you. Well, she didn't. Did she? Please do not tell me that you were so captivated by her beauty that you completely ignored what she was actually saying. Of course not. I think I would remember if Zurine told me that I'd be babysitting the damn head of the family. But babysitting How dare you! Serving me should be an honor. You couldn't even bathe yourself when you first came here. Guess who had to do that for you? Or have you forgotten? Oh my almighty lord, knocked a gall. <laughs> what are you guys, five years old or something? Your immortal vampires are crying out loud. Stop squabbling. You stay out of this, Miranda. This is a matter of honor. Yeah, yeah, sure. Honor. Because getting bathed by your great-grandchild when you're a grown man is so honorable. And all because you were feeling lo- Stop! Don't you say any more. Hmm? I don't even know why I was so conflicted over this decision. I have a pretty good feeling that everything will turn out alright. I'm going to choose to believe in the Noctigal family. And in Adrian. Miranda, are you awake? Huh? Yeah, I'm just reading. What's the matter? Octavia and Melchior are quarreling over whom between them will be allowed to sit next to you when we dine this evening. What? Why does it even matter? You tell me. My children seem to have taken quite a shine to you. 
I have no idea why. I thought they would hate me, honestly. It's not like I'm trying to win them over, so calm down. I am perfectly calm. Yeah, and I'm sure that jealousy I hear is just my imagination. Every time one of them has a problem, they come to you. It matters not what you are doing or where you are, or even if you are with me. Probably because I don't get angry, at, angry as easily as you do. What does that matter? I am irritated that they are cutting in on our time together with their incessant presence. That's what you were annoyed about? I thought you were jealous because you thought they liked me more than you. Of course not. Do they like you more than they like me? <laughs> this has got to be one of the most ridiculous conversations we've had this week. You know, when I made my decision to stay with you, I didn't consider the fact that I'd suddenly be become a great-grandmother because of it. I'm honestly still reeling a little. It's a lot to take in. Do you dislike my family? Of course not. I've gotten to know them all really well, and they've become really dear to me, though they are a little hard for me to explain. Recently, Adrian let me contact my family and friends back home. As far as they know, I got swept off my feet by a mysterious Belgian gentleman, and I quit st school to become a rich housewife. I don't have to deal with the consequences of that right now, so I just let it be. Really, dear? Eh? A little too dear, as, uh, as far as I am concerned. Uh, hello? Will you stop sulking already? Just who is sulking? This 2,000 year old vampire under me, that's who. Do not be absurd. I am merely concerned for my partner's well-being. Uh-huh. Is something wrong? No, I was just thinking, remembering the past. I never imagined that I would be able to have a good relationship with my family like I have now, with all my memories and powers intact. Sometimes I am afraid that it is only a dream. If it's just a dream, I hope neither of us wake up. <laughs> now, now who is the corny one? <laughs> hmm. Still you, Adrian. Why you? Personally, I think the dream is just starting. Adrian End. Huh. Well, that didn't go how I expected it to. I guess it was kind of cute. Um, anyway, I swear that I saw, like, a screenshot of both Adrian and, um, and Luca biting Miranda at the same time. So, unless it was just fan art, that might mean that there's like a, what you call it, uh, ending with both of them. So, let me just see if we can get it real quick. I like bacon before my night snack, yes. Been over this. Oh, in the end, I didn't really learn much about Adrian or Luca. I feel like I know them about as well as when I first came. Tomorrow night, they might feed on me again. <clears throat> the night after that, the rest of the Noctigalls will be back, and I'm probably going to be killed in order to keep their secret. Oh, this is a new choice. Let's uh, be dramatic. Even so, I'll stay here. Even if I don't like the situation I'm in, I don't know what could happen to me if I try to escape. So, I'll stay here. Besides, they might decide not to kill me. There's no point in being too hasty or paranoid. I'll just try to get some sleep. <laughs> Don't die, Miranda. You have a choice to make and not much time to make it, Miranda. Hurry and choose or else we shall decide for you, which might be significantly less pleasant. And so here I am. I spent a lot of time thinking about it, but I couldn't escape. I decided to stay here and see what happens, and now they're offering me a choice. So... I want to die? I want to live? What? Tom Brewery. It might be impud impudent of me, but I want to live. I won't ask you... ask for you guys to let me go. I understand that you need to keep your secret, and even if I promise not to tell a soul, the others might not accept that. I get it. So, if it's possible, I want to stay here, and if you need me to be useful and earn my keep, I'll do what I can. You know, if you're going to stay here, there's pretty much only one way for you to be useful. Like, being a maid? He means your blood, simpleton. Oh. Oh. 
Of course. Well, I'm prepared to deal with that. Well, I have grown a little fond of you in our time together, to be sure. If nothing else, you make a decent plaything. Would you not agree, Luca? My opinion doesn't matter. It's yours that the others will listen to. But yes, I must say that I would find it somewhat unpleasant if she were to be killed. And you were the one who wanted to kill her at first. That was before I knew her, sir. <laughs> Blushing. Thanks for being embarrassed. What are you getting all embarrassed for? Worry not, Miranda. We shan't allow any harm to come to you. Unless it is from us. Gee, thanks. Well, I like both Adrian and Luca well enough. Spending the rest of my life with two handsome vampires in my favorite country? I'd say that beats dying any day. And so time went on. Stop squirming so much. I can't help it. I haven't sat in someone's lap since I was, like, five or six years old. Just relax. If you keep moving around like that, it'll hurt. Easy for you to say. Are you ready, Miranda? As ready as I'll ever be, I guess. Ah! <laughs> uh, that hurt, Luca. I told you it would. I already stopped moving. You did that on purpose. <laughs> Don't you have me. Luca, would you stop teasing her already? You're making her blood taste bitter. I prefer it that way. Well, I do not. <laughs> We're supposed to be sharing her, remember? Would you two stop talking against my neck like that? It tickles. Ah, it got sweet again. Isn't it because she feels good? Perhaps we should continue talking then. Not you two. Hey, which one of us is it better? Oh, I would quite like to hear this, too. I'm not t I mean, I don't know. How cute. When you get embarrassed, your blood tastes almost unbearably sweet. Gross. <laughs> you keep your thoughts to yourself. Which one does it better, huh? Truth be told, I don't think I could pick even if someone held me at gunpoint. When I think of living here, it's just natural. Natural for me to picture the three of us together. This arrangement might continue on for some time. And that's fine by me. <laughs> Menage a trois ending. How lovely. Well, that's not at all, folks. Hello and good night. Um, honestly, I have no idea what game I'll do next. Oh, I do still. <sighs> <sighs> Sorry, I'm tired. I'll think about it. I do still have um, date warp that I started. If you didn't notice, like, the <laughs> the empty um, playlist for Date Warp in there. Um, but my files got all messed up, so I had to delete the video I made. Anyway, so I'll probably do that next. And that has, like, 70 million routes, so... Rip me. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed.